welcome to both of the nominees. Uh, Ms. Clark, as I look to your record, uh, I see the record of someone who has spent a career as a partisan advocate. Uh, last year, you wrote an op-ed in Newsweek uh, entitled, I Prosecuted Police Killings, Defund the Police, But Be Strategic. Do you still believe it is a good idea to defund the police? Thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I do not support defunding the police. The impetus for writing that op-ed was to make clear that I do not support defunding the police. And I um, spend considerable time talking about the need to channel resources to uh, places such as um, mental health treatment to alleviate some of the burdens that we place on the doorstep of law enforcement, some of the issues we ask them to wrestle with that are outside their core competency. But, but, but Ms. Ms. Clark, I, let, let me, and we have limited time, so let me, you say you don't support defunding the police, you just said it twice. The title of your article was defund the police, but let's not just look to the title. Your article begins by saying that the national protests we saw last year, quote, opened up space for transformative policy discussions. You then continue to write, into that space, and this is a quote, into that space has surged a unifying call from the Black Lives Matter movement, defund the police. Do you really believe defund the police is a unifying call? I, I don't support defund the police. Well, I'm reading from your article. Did, do you missed, disagree with your article? I missed the demonstrations and protests. I wanted to provide a different perspective. I don't support taking away resources from police and putting communities in harm's way. We, there's a uh, rise okay. in hate crimes and extremism. Ms. Clark, you, you know you're testifying under oath here. Please Absolutely. allow her to, you, you just uh, said Senator, a moment Cruz, ago. Senator Cruz, please allow her to complete her answers. Well, I'm not going to allow her to filibuster. So I'm going to ask a question. If she wants to answer the question that I asked, she can do so. But I'm not. She I'm should not gonna, be allowed. I hope you'll show respect to the witness. I, I will to, show respect to every you. witness. But we also have limited time, as you're aware. And you've been on this committee long enough to know that witnesses in avoiding questions, we'll try to filibuster on different topics. So I'm going to ask questions, and I'm going to expect answers to the questions I ask. And I understand the chairman wants to jump in and defend the witnesses, but, but that's your prerogative to try to do I so. I will but defend witnesses on either side and members on either side. We will be respectful in this committee. I hope that all members will. I, 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 I hope and expect the same standard will be, be applied to, to, to senators on both sides. Now, let's return to, you just said, you don't support cutting funds from police. I find that astonishing and, Ms. Clark, frankly, not credible because I'm holding the article you wrote, and I actually pulled out a highlighter and highlighted the beginning of each, each paragraph going through. And about midway through, you have a paragraph that says, we must invest less in police and more in social workers. The next paragraph is, we must invest less in per police and more in social support to our schools. The next paragraph begins, we must invest less in police and more in mental health aid. Three paragraphs in your article, you begin with the words, we must invest less in police, and you just told this committee under oath you don't support investing less in police. How do, how do you square those? If, if, I, if I may, Senator, I uh, support the fact that President Biden is committing 300 million new dollars for cop, the COPS program, 300 million new dollars uh, for resources to the police. I wrote that op-ed without having the power of the purse string behind me and talked about how we can allocate a limited pool of resources in a more effective way. So you, but, do you believe you were wrong last year when you called for defunding the police and investing less in the police? It's a poor title chosen by the editor. It's not just the title, it's your text. We must invest less in police. Three paragraphs you begin with those words. You wrote those words. Do you agree the, with those words today? Uh, without the power of the purse string, I wrote those words, but President Biden is committing more resources to police, and I think that's a great thing, Senator. All right, let's shift to another topic. Your advocacy and, in frank, in frankly, extreme position on defunding the police is paired with a history of not only excusing, but celebrating murderers who have murdered police officers. It's been reported that during law school, you helped organize a conference with speakers who referred to convicted cop killers 
as political prisoners. This included Mumi Abu Jamal, who murdered a Philadelphia police officer, and Asanta Shakur, who was convicted of murdering a New Jersey state trooper, escaped from prison, and is on the FBI's most wanted list. Did you organize the conference? And do you support celebrating those who murder police officers as heroes and, and political prisoners? Um, the com that conference you're referring to was organized by the late Dr. Manning Marable, a noted historian who led the Institute for Research in African American Studies. I was a student uh, providing support for the Institute, working on a range of projects. Uh, to the second question, Senator, no, I do not celebrate the loss of life. So if you any... say you didn't organize the conference, why did multiple speakers at the conference thank you by name for inviting them to speak at the conference? Because I was a, a hardworking student that uh, made sure people were fed, uh, mailed out invitations, provided the agenda. I was a, a student providing logistical support to a notable historian who was the one who organized that conference. So if there's a police officer in Philadelphia or New Jersey today watching this hearing, how are they supposed to react to your nomination to one of the senior positions of the Department of Justice, knowing that as a student, you participated in a conference celebrating and lionizing cop killers who murdered a Philadelphia police officer and a New Jersey state trooper? How, how, how should a cop today watching this react to that news? I have never uh, and would not ever celebrate the loss of life or the killing of a police officer, Senator. Not ever. Do you Thank believe you, they're Senator political Cruz. prisoners? Thank you, Senator Cruz. 